Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to my March 2020 reading wrap-up. So I just have the one book to let you know about at the moment, and that is The Breakdown by B.A. Paris. This is a thriller novel. I've actually previously read Behind Closed Doors, which was her debut. I was sent an ARC of it as it goes. Saw this in a charity shop and thought I'd pick it up and check it out. I am a bit hit and miss when it comes to thrillers. Sometimes I enjoy them, sometimes I don't. Uh, I have, I guess, kind of like a love-hate relationship with the genre. I also think they can be quite cliche and predictable. However, this one, even though I did predict the twist coming, I did still enjoy it. I just really enjoyed B.A. Paris's writing style. and um, So yeah, it was actually a genuine pleasure. I gave this a 4 out of 5 and would recommend it to you if you're looking for a new thriller. Uh, it's basically about this woman who might have early onset dementia and uh, she starts to lose her mind a bit and there's been a murder nearby and then she starts getting these mysterious phone calls. Okay guys, just one more book to update you on and that is Travels With My Aunt by Graham Greene. This was actually a reread. I've cheated a bit here because this was my reread for March, for March's rereadathon prompt. Travels With My Aunt is one of my favourite Graham Greene novels. It's kind of what he would consider one of his entertainments as opposed to a serious novel. Basically this guy who's about 60 odd, he goes to his mum's funeral, meets his aunt who he hasn't seen for years and they end up going travelling together and she's nuts and we get like, you know, like there's some marijuana humour in this even. There's a kind of quite cliché a little bit racist black character. Um, but he is called Wordsworth as well, so he is pretty cool. Overall, just I really enjoyed this book probably as much as I did the first time I read it. I reread it via audiobook. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5. Yeah, I would definitely recommend it, especially if you've never read any Graham Greene before. It's actually probably quite a good one of his books to start with before you go ahead and dive into like Brighton Rock or The Power and the Glory or something. All right, I've got another book for you guys, and that is uh, Them. And that is Them Adventures with Extremists. This is non-fiction. He basically travels around the world talking to different types of extremists from like Islamic fundamentalists to, you know, white supremacists, Ku Klux Klan members and stuff. It is kind of outdated by this point. It was actually first published in 2001, so it was written pre-9-11. And that kind of makes it a snapshot in time, but also it was fascinating to read despite that. Ronson's got a great sense of humour. I, he, I kind of think of him as like Louis Theroux, but for non-fiction investigative uh, literature, as opposed to Theroux who works with documentaries. But they both have similar approaches to what they do and similar senses of humour as well. All in all, I did enjoy reading this. I gave it a 4 out of 5, and there is a full review of this knocking around somewhere. Okay guys, just got the one book to update you on, and that is All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Durr. This is like historical fiction. It kind of reminded me of The Book Thief mixed with The Miniaturist, I guess. Uh, I guess you would call it literary fiction. It was actually the winner of the Pulitzer Prize in 2015. Um, it's about a blind girl, the war, and uh, this like gem that has a curse on it, I guess. It's kind of hard to, to, to summarise. Um, I have done a full review of this, so I'll link to this below. Uh, all in all, it was beautifully written. It was quite slow at times, but also like the formatting of it, at least. It did kind of keep me... Like, I probably did 150 to 200 pages a day of this bad boy. So, all in all, I'm glad I read it. Um, it's not my favourite, but it was alright. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. Alright, I've got a couple more books here to wrap up for you guys. So the first one here is Trash Panda by Lisa Cantoral. This is, sort of, I would say, contemporary poetry. I'm going to flick in at random, actually, and read you a poem. At war with the gremlins in my heart. My broken pieces don't fit into your pocket. You feed me crumbs, asking for love. Just your touch, but a touch is too much. How do you feel when you are thinking about writing about how you feel? I think I might be melting from too many feelings. Feelings. My heart is eroding because of feelings. We'll do girl woman as well. My pains, my aches, what are they talking about? I don't know who I am anymore. Am I that scared little girl or some bitch woman? And why is that all I can think of? Are you a good witch or a bad witch? Why do I have to choose? So yeah, I really enjoyed this poetry. It's published by Clash Books, who are a pretty cool publisher. Their tagline is, we put the lists in literature. Um, I know Lisa Cantoral. I mean, I've never actually met her, but we're Facebook friends and have been for a while as well. So I wanted to check out her work and I was very impressed. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 and it's the best poetry collection I've read so far this year. And then we have Forever Words by Johnny Cash. And this is basically some of Johnny Cash's poetry slash lyrics. Uh, they're often accompanied by uh, like... Mine's gone blank. They're often accompanied by scans of like the original lyrics as he hand wrote them, which I think is very cool. I will say you don't really get to see another side of him here that you don't see anywhere else. And actually a lot of these are just lyrics to his well-known songs, you know. But um, 
I did enjoy reading it for what it's worth. It's also got some photos and stuff in. I think for a Johnny Cash fan, this would be a pretty cool artifact to have, and I'll definitely be keeping it in my permanent collection, even if I don't know if I'll necessarily reread it. Will you reread it, Biggie? You got your ass in my face. I gave it a 4 out of 5. Okay guys, just the one book to update you on today, and that is Frenchman's Creek by Daphne du Maurier. I actually read this... Ambulance. I actually read this as a uh, buddy read. And uh, this is like a historical fiction novel, basically about this English woman who falls in love with a French pirate. That's about all there is to really say about it. Um, it was beautifully written, I did find it pretty slow, but I find that with du Maurier quite often. Um, this is my third of her books, and to be honest, when I was reading this, I was thinking about maybe just no longer reading any more de Maurier, or at least taking her off my wish list and just picking her up when I saw her in charity shops, but it did redeem itself by the end. Uh, there was some great, like, dramatic irony in this as well. Um, like, for example, the pirate goes into this room and he's, like, holding people hostage, and the English woman's there, and he's, like, pretending to rob her jewellery and stuff. When secretly they're lovers, and some of the conversations they have in front of these other people, great, top-notch stuff. Overall, though, still, uh, 3.25 out of 5. I don't know if I'd recommend it. It just wasn't really my thing. Full review of this as well, coming soon. Alright, I've just got one more book for you guys today, and that is Bone Chillers, The Shopping Spree. Shop till you drop. Dead. Uh, this is by Betsy Haynes, and uh, this is like a contemporary of, and a similar kind of thing to the Goosebumps books. This one's set in a shopping mall. Uh, Robin and her friends go to Wonderland Mall looking for sales, looking for bargains. Too bad something's looking for them. And, um, yeah, it was alright. As I say, it, it is basically a Goosebumps book, you know, but not written by R.L. Stein. But it did have a nice little sense of humour to it. Overall, I gave it just a pretty standard 3.5 out of 5. Oh. Alright, I've got one book to update you guys on, and that is Parker Pine Investigates by Agatha Christie. This is a short story collection following Parker Pine, who is one of her lesser-known detective characters. Basically, the premise of this is he puts an advert in the newspaper saying, Are you happy? If not, consult Mr. Parker Pine. And then it's a short story collection that follows all of the different people who kind of follow up with him. He's quite devious, so quite often he sets things... Like, he'll, he'll set things up so that, um, you know, people are put in this situation... It's kind of hard to explain, like, he'll trick them into thinking that they've become a spy, for example, because he knows that they're unhappy because they have no excitement in their life. So, uh, yeah, overall, I really enjoyed this one. I actually gave it a 5 out of 5 and would definitely recommend it, especially if you've never delved outside of Poirot or Marple. All right, so just the one book to wrap up for you guys today, and that is Ordeal by Innocence by Agatha Christie. Uh, this is basically about um, there's a murder is committed and this young man is sent to jail for it and he dies of pneumonia in jail. And then some evidence comes to light that suggests that maybe he wasn't the perpetrator of this crime after all. I've got to be honest, it, it wasn't particularly gripping. Um, you know, Agatha Christie is great and I enjoy everything that she writes, but some of her books are more hits than others for me. And this definitely is one of the ones that was a little bit slow. The plot was okay, the characters not so much. Overall, I gave it like a pretty standard like 3.25 out of 5. Um, not one I'd recommend going out of your way for, but obviously if you're a completionist and you want to read every Agatha Christie novel, eventually you're going to want to get to it. Okay guys, I am on holiday at the moment. This is the best shot we can do, unless I, maybe I'll sit on my knees. Try and get the height right. Slightly better, screw it. Uh, some stuff to wrap up for you guys today. So I have finished reading, where is it? <laughs> Here it is. So I finished reading uh, David and Goliath by Malcolm Gladwell. So this is basically about how smaller companies and smaller people can outperform the larger ones because they're more nimble. But he does point out that the problem with that is that David was always the favourite in the fight between David and Goliath because Goliath was wearing a heavy suit of armour and was a way, way away and David had a sling which was used in warfare, you know? It's like, have, it's like shooting somebody with a bow and arrow or something. You know, if you've got a range weapon, one-on-one -on -one combat when you've got a range weapon and the other guy doesn't, you're going to win. And then basically the rest of this was just then looking at all these different examples of say, you know, Google and Facebook, they started off as smaller companies and they were able to, you know, outpace the competition. It was fine. I, I, I don't think the actual point of the novel really need elaborating on though. Like, it's a very simple concept that I think is just self-evident that smaller companies can outperform larger ones by making use of their agility. I mean, it, it, it's like a known thing, you know? So, 
Overall, I was kind of disappointed by this because I felt as though the entire book was pretty much irrelevant. I gave it a three out of five. I actually read it as a bedtime book. I've read Malcolm Gladwell in the past and really ignored, uh, really enjoyed him, but this one was just, yes, very boring, very dull, very repetitive, and won't tell you anything that I haven't just told you, you know? So three out of five for that. And then we have Cuckoo Song by Francis Hardinge. So uh, this is my third Francis Hardinge novel. I've previously read The Lie Tree, and I can't remember the other one. I think it had shadows in the title. Uh, she kind of writes like historical fiction slash magical realism. This one is more, I would say, more like a fairy tale, but with a bit of historical fiction. It's kind of set between the two, two wars. And I would love to tell you what it's about, but I got very bored during the first 150 or so pages, and so didn't really pay attention to the setup. Then it did start to get interesting, but um, it's very difficult to explain it anyway, and honestly, it just isn't her best. It was very beautifully written, and I've got a bunch of tabs that I'm going to be talking about in my review, which I will link to below if it's out. But um, yeah, not one worth going out of your way for, and quite a disappointment to me, to be honest, because the first two of her books that I read, I really enjoyed, and this one just not so much. So I gave it a 3 out of 5. Alright, I've got two books to wrap up for you guys today. The first is Desperation by Stephen King. So this is a novel, it's basically set in this small town in Nevada called Desperation. And the local cop has gone nuts. And, uh, you know, we start off with him stopping some people and arresting them. Uh, you know, one of them gets shot through the stomach, this kind of thing. Uh, yeah, there's some pretty good gore bits in it, really, I guess. But also, it's just got that small town kind of creepy vibe. Kind of, you know how things like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, where they have that little forgotten village and there's like this mad person running around. It's very much got that vibe of like a slasher uh, movie. I actually really enjoyed it. I'm surprised I haven't heard more people talk about this one. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5. And there is a full review, which I will link to below if I remember to. And then I read Birthday Letters by Ted Hughes, so this is a collection of his poetry. I'm going to read you uh, one of his poems, just to give you a feel for his style. I like this one, for example. It's, uh, God help the wolf after whom the dogs do not bark. And the wolf in question here is Sylvia Plath. Settle in, this is quite a long one. There you met it, the mystery of hatred. After your billions of years in anonymous matter, that was where you were found and promptly hated. You tried your utmost to reach and touch those people with gifts of yourself. Just like your first words as a toddler when you rushed at every visitor to the house, clasping their legs and crying, I love you, I love you. Just as you had danced for your father in the home of anger, gifts of your life to sweeten his slow death and mix yourself in it, where he lay propped on the couch to sugar the bitterness of his raging death. You search for yourself to go on giving it, as if after the nightfall of his going you danced on in the dark house, eight years old in your tinsel, searching for yourself in the dark as you danced, floundering a little, crying softly, like somebody searching for somebody drowning in dark water, listening for them, in panic at losing those listening seconds from your searching, then dancing wilder in the silence. The colleges lifted their heads. It did seem you disturbed something just perfected, that, you were hold that they were holding carefully all of a piece till the glue dried, and as if reporting some felony to the police. They let you know that you were not John Dom. You no longer care. Did you save their names? But then they let you know day by day their contempt for everything you attempted, took pains to inject their bile as for your health into your morning coffee, even signed their homeopathic letters, envelopes full of carefully broken glass, to lodge behind your eyes so you would see. Nobody wanted your dance, nobody wanted your strange glitter, your floundering, drowning life and your effort to save yourself, treading water, dancing the dark turmoil, looking for something to give. Whatever you found, they bombarded with splinters, derision, mud the mystery of that hatred. So yeah, overall, I really enjoyed this collection of poetry. I would give it a pretty solid 3.75 out of 5. I mean, the problem with Ted Hughes is that I always compare him to Plath, and I always prefer Plath. So that's basically why he didn't get four stars. Sorry, Ted. Okay, just the one book to wrap up for you guys today, and that is Much Ado About Nothing by William Shakespeare. So um, this is one of his... I suppose it's kind of humorous, but there's also some sort of comedy and drama in there as well. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, there's like this case of mistaken identity in it, various other things happening. And, uh, yeah, well, here we go. One of Shakespeare's most witty and enjoyable comedies, Much Ado About Nothing, is a play that explores courtship, romance, and marriage through a number of relationships. So that's what it's about, you know? Um, I enjoyed it. I gave it a four out of five. What was interesting about this version was that the notes were on the left-hand side and the play was on the right-hand side. And that actually made me feel like I was, I was making real progress when I was reading it. 
and um, I didn't really need the, the notes too much. Um, I read, there's like introductions to each of the scenes, and so I read those and that gave me enough context that I didn't really need um, anything else. And so, uh, oh hey Biggie. And uh, so yeah, it was uh, an enjoyable little read. I gave it a four out of five. All right guys, just the one book to update for you today, and that is Moriarty by Anthony Horovitch. This is a Sherlock Holmes novel. Uh, it's like authorized by the Sir Arthur Conan Doyle estate and whatnot. He's also actually previously written the House of Silk, which I did enjoy. This one not so much. It was okay and there was a pretty good twist at the end. He kind of set me up all the way through thinking that I knew the twist and then it was a completely different one. So I guess that was alright. Uh, Horovitch himself is pretty well known and well respected for his Alex Ryder books. Uh, he's also written a new James Bond novel that's coming out as well, which I kind of want to read. I only really read this because I'm a Sherlock Holmes fan I guess I mean I've read all the Sherlock books I'm actually trying to slowly read everything that Sir Arthur Conan Doyle ever wrote so uh, that's kind of why I ticked this off otherwise I don't think it's really worth reading it overall it was just all right I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. All right, guys, just the one book to update you on today, and that is One Hit Wonderland by Tony Hawks. As you can see from the tabs, I will be doing a full review of this. Basically, this is non-fiction about this guy. He had a one-hit wonder in 1988, and in the early 2000s, he decided he's going to try and get another hit song uh, so that he's no longer a one-hit wonder. And this is basically his journal of his travels throughout the world, trying to make that happen. So he went to, like, Holland. I think he went to Africa at one point. Uh, he went to Nashville. So it's like a travel book but also with this humorous element and with this kind of plot to it as well, you know. Really enjoyable and a great book to read at the moment while everybody's in lockdown and stuff. So overall, I gave it a pretty solid 4 out of 5 and would recommend. Alright guys, another book to wrap up for you today and that is Gerald's Game by Stephen King. Uh, this is basically about a woman who is handcuffed to a bed as part of a sex game by her husband and then he dies and it's pretty much focused on that and then follows her attempts to escape but she's also coming to terms with some stuff that happened in her past. Definite trigger warnings for child abuse, um, rape, and that sort of thing. But actually, I thought it was well handled. King normally does do that very well. And uh, the main characters feel very real. I mean, I'd actually seen the movie of this first, so I knew the basic plot. But I couldn't remember how it ended. And honestly, it was a joy to read anyway. It took me, like, less than... It took me about 36 hours to read this. Just whiz through it. Full review of this will be coming soon. But overall, I did enjoy it. I gave it a 4 out of 5. Didn't I, Biggie? Yeah, it did. I have three books, I guess, to talk to you about. Two of them are my own book, which is formally. I'm counting these in my reading total of the month because I can. Um, basically, I've spent the month recording an audiobook of my novel formally, and then I then had to re-listen to it all just to give it like what I did, what I called a proof listen. Uh, I'm not going to rate it or anything, but I did want to mention it here. So yeah. And that will probably be out on my channel soon if it isn't already. And then on top of that, we have Cat's Cradle by Kurt Vonnegut. Um, this is basically like the biography, sort of, of a man who was like one of the fathers of the atom bomb. And basically, it investigates um, this guy's legacy, really. Um, it's sort of satirical, very humorous, lots of really good one-liners. In fact, out of all the tabs that I've got in it here, most of them are one-liners. I'll be doing a full review of it soon. What I will say, it was like really genuinely a pleasure to read. And this is at a time when I'm kind of scraping the barrel with what books I'm reading. I've not got that much stuff on my currently reading list. So I'm having to, you know, read a lot of stuff that I've been putting off for ages. And this was one of those. And it was great. Really enjoyed it. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 and it'll probably be in my top books of the quarter. Well anyway, those are all the books that I read in March. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.